Okay, guys, I am super, super excited because these Noctua NFA 4x20 fans just showed up. These are 40 by 40 millimeter fans. They're 20 millimeters thick. They run at 5,000 RPM at just 15 decibels. And I have a crazy idea for these things. And it has to do with cooling a GPU. So these are a bunch of GPUs. We can't really run it on the big guys. I only have four of these fans. So we're going to pick the Galax RTX 4060 Ti and see if we can make some slight improvements to the cooling on this thing. First off, we're going to take the card apart in order to get it all slimmed down to where we need it in order to actually utilize these Noctua 40mm fans. And it might be a little bit of a crazy idea, but I have a, a vision for what this card is going to look like. And just think like jet engine or like a uh, fighter jet when it comes to this card. So we got off the existing 85mm uh, fans that come on this card and this is what i'm thinking so four 40 millimeter fans uh pushing air through the graphics card off to the side rather than pushing air down onto the face of the pcb now a lot of cards these days have a flow through design that take advantage of more of like an airflow through the heat sink but i really want to take advantage of this with these 40 millimeter fans so we're gonna mock something up real quick using some uh poster board just to kind of get a feel an idea of what this card might perform like with these uh, nf a4 fans. Um, so we're going to get everything cut down to size, kind of map out where our 40 millimeter fans are going to go uh, in order to make sure that we're, we're avoiding uh, the power supply cables, we're avoiding anything else on the heatsink that needs to be accessible. Uh, and, and we're just going to kind of lay things out on our side profile of what the GPU is going to look like. I've also thought about doing either pulling air through the heatsink, so exhausting out the side of uh, of the card, or actually pushing air through the heatsink in this kind of, well, this would be kind of pulling through the card, pushing would be the fan that I'm touching right now, uh, just to kind of see what the best possible airflow configuration is going to be. If we had this thing vertically mounted, I'm thinking more pull through the card uh, and have the fans at the bottom of the case kind of push air through and then have these exhausted out. Uh, but in a horizontal configuration, a typical mount inside of a case, more likely to do a push, uh, a push configuration, pushing air through the heatsink. So just going to notch out where all of the fan holes line up so we can make sure we can mount all of the fans to our little poster board side profile. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, it's a very, very simple design process we're going through right now. Nothing too crazy. Eventually, depending on the results of how this thing turns out, very possible we'll mock this thing up in CAD and actually get something 3D printed. 3D print like a full shroud, new shroud for this card. Um, but as you can see, like the side profile of the Galax card, it has this little lip and the poster board fits perfectly inside of that lip to really kind of give you an idea of what this card is going to look like. But we got the side profile all cut out for our fans and we're going to go with a pull or a push through configuration, pushing air through the heatsink and we're going to mount the fans just with some zip ties for now just to make sure that everything is nice and secure and eventually if we did fully 3d print a design of course we would mock out all of the necessary fan mounting holes inside of the 3d print in order to get everything securely mounted with screws rather than just zip ties but for the the sake of this video and the for the sake of this kind of prototype build we're just going to use some zip ties and get everything secured uh, in order for us to test this card out now it'll be interesting to see how this thing performs because of the size of these fans they're not going to be producing that much static pressure they're not going to be moving a crazy amount of air uh, hopefully it's comparable with what comes on the card um, but that's why typically when you see people kind of you know do their own custom gpu cooling it's typically with 120 or 140 millimeter fans but this is the end result so i got everything kind of covered over with a poster board so that all of the air is now being forced through the heatsink and there's no air gaps to let any loose air get out of this gpu 
Uh, it might look not the best, but it should perform pretty well. And we got our cords, or at least our fan headers, daisy chained together. And we're going to use two chassis fan headers on our motherboard in order to actually power the fans. So we're not powering it off of the GPU fan headers. If we ever wanted to make this thing kind of official, we would definitely look to do that. But for the case of this prototype, we're just going to plug them into the chassis fan headers, get the GPU installed. And when we do go into the BIOS and set this thing up, We'll just run those fans at full speed to really see how well this thing can perform under ideal conditions. We'll run the fan full blast 5000 RPM and see what kind of temperatures we get. But getting this thing installed into our case, into our PC, it does look honestly pretty cool. Like you've never seen anything like this inside of a PC case before. And I kind of like the look of it. Like it's super retro. I mean, of course, they're not two fans, but you're just not expecting to see that when you look inside of somebody's PC. Now, off the bat, running in the typical silent fan control mode uh, on our ASUS BIOS, we're looking at like 2200 RPM, but we're going to apply the full, uh, full speed fan control to both chassis one fan header, chassis four fan header, which are the two fan headers we used for our daisy chain connections. And that'll then bump the speed up to the full top end uh, of the RPM range, which is 5,000 RPM. So now you can see 5,192 on one and 5,018 RPM on the other set of fans. And those things are spinning up, but they're not crazy noisy, which is really, really good to see. So off the bat base, we got the, t the PC turned on. We're looking at 34 degrees C. Now in our existing test with the base configuration straight out of the box from Galax, we never got above 62, 63 degrees Celsius with the fan curve. And remember, there is no fan curve on our new build. It's running at full 5,000 RPM all the time. Right now, we're sitting around 59. There's 62 degrees C. So we're already at our max temp on our out-of-the-box configuration. And after around like four or five minutes, we seem to hit steady state, which looks to be 82 degrees C. So definitely not the improvement we thought we might see. But yeah, I don't know if this design is perfectly what we thought it was going to work out to. Uh, but I just want to see if we can maybe give it a little bit more uh, uh, capabilities by removing the cover on the back of the card and using our uh, just another 120 millimeter fan, a slim fan uh, on the back of the card to actually now exhaust some air out of the top of the heatsink. So push air in with the 40 mil fans and then pull it out with the 120. And that uh, hopefully will give us some better results. Uh, we already see it's maybe a little bit slower to creep up, but still around that 59, 60 degrees Celsius range after a couple of minutes. Uh, but after uh, five, six minutes, we hit steady state, and now we're looking at around 73, 74 degrees C, which is definitely better than 81, but still not what it is out of the box. Uh, but yeah, I mean, maybe not exactly what I was expecting, but I'd love to see or hear what you guys are thinking down in the comments below. Would you like to see a full build of this thing just to see what it would look like? Uh, you know, all mocked up, 3D printed, get a full real shroud on this build. Maybe use these 40 millimeter fans on another style card. I'd love to hear what your guys' thoughts are down below. So definitely leave some comments.